back it up. So we will guarantee the financial performance of the project. We'll also guarantee the project itself. So, you know, in the case of a streetlight system where we, where we would probably put in LEDs, we would guarantee that for 10 years. But in a lot of cases, um, we'll, we'll guarantee the entire system for five years. So if we do a turnkey project <coughs> for the city, if it's in a building like this, we would wrap the whole thing into a guaranteed package, a five-year guaranteed package. So it's nice for the city, really, we call it one coach chunk. You know, you, you're never going to call it <coughs> and have us say, well, it's the guy that made the light, or it's the guy that made the socket, or it's the guy that made the ballast, or the guy that did the installation, because we do all of it. So if you have a problem, we're there 24-7 to take care of it. Let me suggest this. Between John and Jim and yourself, sometime before the next 30 days, get together and decide what you guys want to do. Well, I think Todd, the right. finance person, needs to be part of that. I appreciate that. Uh, well. And the solicitor as needed. I would take my directions from, from whoever's in charge, the chairman and the committee to cancel points. Well, you guys brought up concern, that's all. And, and, and there's nothing on top. We just want to come back and say, okay, this is going to work, but it's not going to work. Or, Whatever it may be. <laughs> Dan, did you have a question? Well, yeah, I, and I didn't know at this point in time if you would take questions for the audience or not. But uh, I do have a question for the gentleman. The the audit that you do uh, as part of your guaranteed energy savings. Okay, the audit, if correctly if I'm wrong, is a two-step process. Correct. In other words, you you would come in and do your preliminary audit, with, which would identify potential savings for the city. Okay, and that's done at no cost to the municipality, correct? Okay, now, at that point, if the city chooses to move forward with your company, at that point, do you not do the comprehensive energy audit then to really get into down and dirty like motor horsepowers and, and higher efficiency motors and different compressors and different lighting and things like that? Is that not a two-step process? Um. Really, yes, but it's not necessarily a two-step process for the audit. For us, it's a lighting system. And in the case of the roller rink, if we're going to talk about doing other technologies, then that's a different story. But if we're talking about coming in and doing an audit and analysis of the lighting system, we'll come in and do a pretty comprehensive walk through the property. We'll sit down with the facilities people at the property. We'll identify areas. It's one of the other benefits of, of working with us, because what we'll do is we'll sit down with the facilities people at the site, and we will talk about different areas in the facility. A lot of times these facilities, you know, they could be 20, 30, 40 years old. And when they were built and the lighting system was put in, they were doing something in that building. Now they're doing something else. I mean, it could have been a warehouse when it was built, and now it's a school. Um, so, you know, the, the lighting needs may have changed. So we want to evaluate any area in the facility. There's there, another thing that, that, that's very common is to achieve efficiency what a lot of ESCOs have done is they've come in and replaced incandescents. They say the incandescents right up, the incandescents right up here. They're not being used, but they're there. And so a lot of ESCOs would have come in and replaced those with CFLs. And um, they, they did that for efficiency purposes. But in order to get that efficiency, they had to give up some control because if the CFLs can't dim down. And you know, you, they're, they're also not good on a uh, aux sensor because they, they, they die prematurely. And, you're gonna, you might have a conference room where somebody came and put, or a restaurant where somebody came and put CFLs in and they got rid of the dimmer switches and they can't, you know, they can't adjust it anymore. We want to give that back to you. I mean, with LED technology, I mean, it's very flexible. I mean, not only can you dim it down, you can set different colors. It's, it's amazing what you can do today with that. And they're, they're, they're extremely efficient. So, to answer your question, we'll come in and do a pretty comprehensive walk of the property and get a fixture count and talk with the facilities people about different areas that might need to be changed. And what we'll do is come in afterwards if the if the facility wants to move forward with it, and we'll do a pre-construction walk and we'll verify all the counts and all that kind of thing. But we won't come back in and do another comprehensive audit from which we go to contract. We can go to contract with the initial walkthrough that we do. Okay. Now, that's that's assuming we feel comfortable doing that. There may be an application where we don't. You know, there might there might be some maybe somebody in here owns a building that's ten stories and we go in and we look at one floor and we multiply it by ten. Then we would want to go back in and do a comprehensive. So audit. if 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 I if I may follow up with that then. So what you're saying is you would come in and do your audit for the city, okay? And you would come in and do a presentation to the city and and outline what you're going to do, mm -hmm. okay? You're going to replace this lighting. We're going to replace these motors. We're going to put weather stripping around these windows. Whatever it is you're going to do to re reduce our energy consumption. You're going to turn that report over to the city, and there's no charge whatsoever for that. 
That's correct. Although we are not going to give the city the scope of work that we've identified, because what we're not, what we're really not trying to do is create a bid document that our competitors can use. Right. Okay. What we'll do is we'll come in and discuss what the alternatives are. We'll discuss what the project is. You know, if this, if the city's in a situation, you know, the cities, they have an RFP process that they have to go through. They also have the ability to do a single source if they decide to do that. And a lot of it is based on the qualifications of the vendor. So, you know, one way the city can decide to do a, a retrofit of any technology is have an engineer come and evaluate it and, and develop a scope and then put that scope out to bid. And there's a lot of costs associated with doing all of that. It's a long process, it's costly, and um, it's effective. Um, but what you end up with is what that engineer designs. The other thing you can do is, you know, when a, when a city wants to bid on a project, that's the process they go through. If they want to, say, build a ice rink, then they can find out who, what contractor builds ice rinks and what is their qualifications and what kind of history, what kind of experience do they have. Because you don't want a guy that, you know, builds houses, build an ice rink if there's somebody that specializes in building ice rinks. So then they can hire that ice rink builder and then they can negotiate pricing with that ice rink builder. So they, they have that flexibility. And you know, I don't know how to do that here in this city, but these are discussions that we can have. One last question, sir, and I'll shut up. <laughs> okay, then as far as the, uh, you said that you, know, you would guarantee the energy savings to the city over whatever period you, you know, determine, okay? And, and how, do you, how do you do that? I mean, how do you monitor that? I mean, with the, with the package that you would that you would propose to the city, should the city choose to move on. I'm sure there's a maintenance and monitoring aspect of that. There's package, a measurement right? verification protocol that we, basically right. what we do, we will sit down with the facilities people. We don't want to monitor it over 10 years. What we want to do is we want to calculate it all up front. So we'll sit down with the facilities people, we'll talk about the different applications, we'll talk about the burn time and the different applications, because that could change. Um, the way you use a building could change. So it's, it's, it, it isn't where we're going to sit down and we're going to monitor the energy savings over the next year. What we're going to do is we're going to meter the lighting system as it is and show you exactly what you're using now. And then we'll meter the new system. And if the new system is performing the way that we said it would, that's how we verify it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Does folks, do they uh, offer the uh, solar uh, street light. We do have a solar street light because um, they've been pretty efficient. Uh, they're very efficient, but they but they they don't work very well. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know. My dad hasn't done a Woodbury, New Jersey. They work fine. They uh, saved a lot of money down there. They do. Yeah, they do. And in fact, we're developing one right now that is. Um, so yes, the answer to your question is yes. If it it depends on what. You're trying to achieve with the street light. What kind of what kind of wattage you're trying to replace? So if you have a, a lower wattage street light that you're trying to replace, then yes, they do work. They work great. But if you're trying to replace a 400 watt metal halide, no, they don't work yet. And we are actually putting together. You know, he mentioned the putting surveillance into the light fixture. We're we're putting one of those together now with a solar panel, so that you can put a light and a camera, a security camera that's controllable by your cell phone, out in a space with no power out there. And so if somebody, you know, if somebody you put in a car lot or, or something, and if, if, somebody, if somebody shows up, the light turns on. It even has the potential of having a speaker on it. So you can talk into your cell phone and say, hey, you, I see you, get out of it. We call the police. And uh, it, it has a tremendous impact on vandalism. So yeah, I mean, we do have a, uh, we do have a, a solar panel street light system. You can system. offer that to them there on, the, on what they would be as far as efficiency for the... Mm -hmm. I have one okay. more question. Do you have something to add on the surveillance? Yeah, I, I just wanted to point out, this is a, uh, a Phillips streetlight, LED streetlight. Uh, by the way, my name is Aaron Nigro. I'm with Genesis Security Integrations, and I uh, was a part of the uh, previous bid for the uh, surveillance project here in Sunbury. Um, this is an LED streetlight produced by Phillips. And this is the robotics camera system integrated in. Uh, this is sort of our, our prototype to show the city because we have other, other demos out. Uh, but basically, you're getting one, two, and three with one. So you're going to get the light 
it, this is an option. You're going to get the light, you're going to get the surveillance, and you're going to get a wireless network, and it's all going to be blanketed under a Philips uh, lease program uh, with the return on investment. So uh, I'm going to plug in the light just to kind of show you the difference. Uh, this LED replaces, I believe, a 400. No, that that particular one replaces about a 200 watt. 200 watt uh, sodium or metal highlight. Metal highlight. Here, I have a question. Do you have any samples? What you want me to uh, light the thing with you? <laughs> 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 So you can see, I mean, this is a lot more efficient than a, you know, yeah, let me tell you, LEDs have come a long way. I mean, we've part, Jim, LEDs one of the things we were looking at uh, was that, with any luck, because obviously Sunbury's got a history there, uh, possibly we could actually, through these conversations, take a look at working with Phillips to become a beta test site for some of the different technologies, like the one that Karen is demonstrating back there, and see ultimately what the results may, you know, obviously, not only demonstrate for them, but certainly for us, and then take a look at how we can financially afford to roll some of them out. I don't, so I don't mean to part. interrupt you, Todd. I, a little background on me is I, I spent the majority of my, uh, well, I, I don't look that old, but I was actually a police officer for 10 years. So pretty much all the solutions that we generate from, from my company is uh, law enforcement based or community oriented. We can, with, by integrating the camera into the light, if, if say there's an emergency and you put a, a button at the bottom of the pole, when someone presses that button, now the street light is going to flash. We can do different patterns with the LED. And what that does for responding officers, it allows them to see exactly where they're going. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, if someone's in distress, you know, it's sometimes difficult to find people's position. But with the blinking LED light above them, it allows police officers to pinpoint exactly where the threat is and engage it. Um, it also allows police to monitor the emergency, you know, while it's taking place, you know, which is humongous because they can actually come over the speaker and stop the crime from happening. You know, if a woman's being attacked or someone's being attacked, the police can stop the crime now before it happens, while re officers are responding. Uh, it, it's a real effective solution, and uh, it, it's, we're, we're implementing this in uh, Toronto um, and several locations in Pittsburgh. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of a, a change in law enforcement uh, in the way that, that police officers police communities. Um, there, there's also other, the possibilities are truly endless. I mean, you can offer uh, community virtual virtual watches where you can allow public access to the cameras and they can do community watch groups and you know what's, benefit, what's beneficial about that is now you have the community getting involved and they're doing it from the safety of their house or the safety of the, of the, the police station or wherever they want to monitor it at you know and when they see something they can report it to the police uh, whereas we can separate what they can view and what access they have to the camera as far as you know file footage and so forth um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of benefits involved with the lighting, um, and Philips will include not just surveillance, but you know uh, I was talking to uh, the council in regards to uh, Verizon. You know we can integrate <coughs> wireless networks in, in here. Uh, the the sky is truly the limit as far as what what the city needs are, and you know what we're able to do. Yeah, what, what I'd like to just kind of wrap everything up with, there's a couple of points I'd like to make. One, one is, as you can see, our, the, from a financial perspective, we're somewhat flexible. Um, and there's unlimited, I mean, there's, there's no limit to what we will fund, especially for a municipality. So um, uh, we're, we're working in, in, I mean, up to a billion dollars in, in some of these markets where, where we're actually talking to the municipality. So my point there is that there's really no limit to the amount of funding that we can participate in. And in a municipality situation, the rates are just fantastic. You know, they're better than, in most cases, better than you can do in a public bond measure. So um, that is available. And we have several different, in, in the package, you'll see several, di several different lease types that make it easier for a municipality to participate in. <coughs> the other thing I wanted to, to say is, you know, I've, I've mentioned the financial aspect of this over and over again. And that's significant. If there's anybody in the audience that's on the commercial side, 
but not necessarily on the municipality side. We talked about doing this as a capital investment. Now, that, that when it's done as a capital investment, that has significant um, tax implications to it. And we understand that, okay? And this is something else that the, uh, that the industry, the ESCO industry, has pretty much avoided. And uh, we don't avoid that. In, in fact, we will help we will help all we can. Let me tell you, there, there are there is several different projects that we have done where an ESCO might come in and propose a project to a, a customer. And let's say that project costs the customer $50,000. And they get a $20,000 rebate. The customer is ecstatic. Well, we'll come in and we'll present the same project, but we'll drive a significant increased amount of reduction out of that facility. And that $40,000 project might go up to $200,000. So there's a capital investment involved there. Now, there's a tax implication to that. And so we are going to um, maximize the tax benefit. And let me tell you, I, there's so many, so many projects that we have done where you, you might have a $200,000 lighting system cost, but tax benefits of three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. So a lot of times you don't pay taxes. No, I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm talking to the commercial market at, at the moment. Um, th those don't apply to the municipality, although the EPAC benefit does. But I don't think you have any commercial users. There's no commercial users here? No. Okay, all right. But thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And we like that billion dollar. I have it. That billion dollar? Yeah. yeah. That is, one mean, of the biggest things that, you know, we, we joke about it, you know, one of the one of the biggest benefits that we offer is a you know, real barrel is full of money. I mean, yeah. it, it's, that's a significant issue. You know, it's, it's difficult to come up with, you know, the upfront cost. So we take care of that. And so, you know, the reality is if you have a project that pays for itself in three years, we'll finance it for four or five years. So you're actually in a, in a positive cash flow from day one with no out-of-pocket costs and in a system, in a project that's guaranteed by Phillips. So, I mean, we really are trying to eliminate the risk to the municipality to enter into an agreement and become more efficient. I hate to put you on the spot, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, quick question. So when we talk about you know, the potential for Sunbury to serve as a beta and a test site, uh, would Phillips be open uh, to talking over the next few weeks with us about exploring the implementation of maybe 10 to 20 uh, new LED light standards with surveillance integrated so we can actually see firsthand what the potential is and at the same time put Phillips in a good light with some publicity certainly the city uh, really get a first-hand look on our engineer to see what the potential is and in the end uh, with any luck that gives us something a little bit more substantive to talk from mm -hmm. yeah we would be interested in talking to you about that. well plus i think if, if you have have you had any successful projects in pennsylvania this far in buildings or anything oh numerous yeah do you have yeah. examples not necessarily with the uh, i mean you mentioned that's a beta sample you talk not, about not with that but with uh, oh yeah of course. So yeah it would be helpful to if you would uh, cross out the name of a specific municipality and, and uh, we get an example of what, <coughs> what the conclusions of your your study might be, we can look at the methodology as an example of something like that. <coughs> would be helpful if you could give to our city uh, clerk. Yeah, who would I get that? Would that be, uh, but I'm concerned, I'm I'm concerned if this is going to work, it would always have to be sole source, Michael. would have to be... Uh, you shouldn't I, be concerned I heard you about say that. something that, 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 that didn't hit me too well. You, you said we would talk to you when we're finished and we would provide you with the information you, you need to, to show you that it would be a savings if indeed it is a savings. But because of we don't want to give our competitive edge away, we wouldn't be providing you with, you know, comprehensive specs that the risk of out for bidding. See, that's what it doesn't mean. Do. If, if we have to go out for bids, if it's not a maintenance issue and it's not a sole source, and we have to go out for bids, then somebody's going to have to do the specs, and I'm not an electrical engineer. <laughs> what would it cost we're, we're, we're happy, what would we're happy to work with you on specs? that? that we're happy to work with you on that. That's that's a that's a different that's a different uh, project. I mean, we're happy to help develop the set the specs. There's just a cost to that. Now, that, I I didn't mean to suggest that we wouldn't go over with you what we're doing and, and be very open and transparent with you. What we're not going to do is leave you with the a scope of work when we you know when we walk away that you can use to put out on the street without any kind of compensation for it. That just would be I, I think defeating the purpose. Unfortunately this kind of program works very nicely with private energy. 
enterprise. Right. But there's going to be a day where we move from just general discussion, which is informative for these council members, to something where bidding is required. Mm -hmm. And then you and your competitors come to a meeting like this, and then at some point we do bidding, and maybe your competitor gets this job rather than you. But there's nothing that prevents you from giving us free advice at this point without bidding. It's just as soon as you have an expectation that we're paying for something or we're buying something, then we get into a bidding area, and that might not interest you to do business the way we have to do business. But at least everybody's up front with each other. Because if it's not sole source and bids must go out, then the proof of the pudding is what the low bid comes in at, which perhaps would be you, but could be someone else. And then those bids would be studied and, and compared to what the projected operational cost would be before a decision is made for awarding the bid, uh, if indeed we have to bid the project. And uh, council would have to do that to satisfy its constituents, it seems to me. And I can't imagine this is a sole source thing because I don't think you're talking about something where you have a unique trade secret in the whole electrical industry. No, and, I, and I think it's nice of you to come talk to us, but I don't think it's anything that's unique. Like some of the other things, like the uh, ice cream or the ice maker that we bought for the ice cream. Zamboni was the only one available. With, with the surveillance integrated in, it, it is industry specific. Uh, okay. There, there is, uh, a, in regards to the cameras, there's networks involved. Um, there's lighting. There's uh, surveillance. Uh, so there's three aspects of it. Um, and I'm, not aware of, of anybody that, that offers uh, the type of incentives and rebates that Philips offers, as well as the video quality um, and the network that, that we offer. And again, that's the kind of thing that if we get that far down the road, we put it in a bid in the newspaper, and if you're the only one who responds, it would be great to do business with you. For the oh, absolutely. We're not, we're not afraid of the bid process at all. Um, we've, we've, we've gone through it many times, and uh, things always sure. work out. So. Okay, Alan, then you and John and Todd and Jim, somewhere in the next couple weeks, you're going to get together somehow. Hope you didn't fly into California tonight. It, it all feels works like it. I'll work hard for your contact and the call me when you get to the next one. Hey, yes, sir. Danny's done several of these audits at the school district, and he's done it, and he has electrical background. Right. Can I suggest that he be on this committee also? Yeah. Well, you just did. He <laughs> looks real. <laughs> first, let's sit down and just get the basics done first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about what we can look at. Before the audits even start, we got some. Sure, we got we got plenty of time. This is just a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a I'll be happy to show you. Very happy to show you what we've done in other municipalities, in other projects. Uh, if I find something that's what find the closest thing to something. If you have a project, the city can save money by having a project, and it meets the third class city code. That's what I would call a synergistic solution. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much. I need a detective session down in the office for a couple minutes, guys. Hey, one quick announcement on uh, April first, street sweeping starts. April first. Circle that. Thank you for coming.